St. Louis architecture is so much, it is so varied. Well, the arch is super important because it is such a simplistic symbol of the birth of our country, right? And so, and architecturally, it's incredible because it was designed about 25 years before people think it was, right? Like it looks like it was, it was built in the 1960s, but it was designed in the 1940s. So it was very forward thinking at the time, um, which makes it incredibly significant. So much more to St. Louis than the arch. So when looking at St. Louis architecture, it's kind of great to think about the idea that we just kind of pulled our city out of the ground, right? The clay for the brick, the limestone for the foundations, and the people that came here from all over the world to build our city. So this is the Wainwright Building by Louis Sullivan, one of the most important architects in American architectural history, and it's his most important building, and it's considered the first skyscraper. When we talk about the Wainwright Building and we say it's the first skyscraper, usually someone laughs because they're like, there's no way. And yes, it was not the first tall building, and it's not the tallest building of its time, at the, even of the 1890s. Um, but what it's different and what makes it the first skyscraper is it's the first building to look tall. It articulates its height, is how we say it. You know, the form that Louis Sullivan came up with could be stretched another 80 stories, right, and be the same form. And that was really radically different. What's also significant about the building is its use of St. Louis materials, right? Red terracotta. The, they're using the material that you see everywhere in the red bricks, you know, all throughout St. Louis. And so it's really symbolic of that. And even though it has a lot of carvings and some really great detailing on it, um, it is definitely leaning towards modern and it has much less detailing than other buildings of its time would have had. So this is the old post office and it was built, it was actually designed in the 1870s, right after the Civil War. The federal government built several of these around the country um, as a kind of a show of might, right? They, they put these big federal buildings in, in lots of big cities like Philadelphia and New York. Um, of those six that they built, only two, like this is the only one that's left. So it's really significant, not just locally, but nationally. The guy that designed it, his name is Alfred Mullet, and he was working for the U.S. government, and he designed these buildings. And there are only two examples of his work in this style left. One is the executive building in Washington, D.C., and this one. And so it's really, really significant. It's actually listed in one of the top 10 most significant buildings in the country. And they started excavating to put this building on the site. Not too far down, they actually ran into a big uh, area of quicksand and they had to adjust for that. And so the way they did that is they sunk over 4,000 pine logs into the quicksand to get a firm thing, poured concrete on top of that, and the building has not settled or moved since. So we're at the Soulard Market, one of the most famous places in St. Louis. Everybody hears about it, but it's not a building that a lot of people know about. The actual history of it, how it got to be here, um, and it's a building with a huge history. This land was donated to the city of St. Louis in the early 1800s by Julia Soulard, who owned this land. She donated it with the caveat that it will always be a public market, which is why St. Louis has a public market still, all these years later. And it's considered one of the oldest farmer's markets west of the Mississippi. Well, the original was just a bunch of people with horse carts. And then there were, you know, kind of a, a more ramshackle type uh, structure. Also, the site that it's on, this was hit by a tornado in 1896. An F4 tornado swept through here doing massive damage, flattened the market. And the building that we have now was the building that was rebuilt after the, you know, after that tornado. 90% of Soulard is that great St. Louis red brick. Um, and while I'm not quite sure where this brick comes from, it is interesting how it sits within the neighborhood and they used yellow brick, yellows and browns. So it does kind of set itself apart from the red brick of the neighborhood. So we're over here in kind of a residential area of Soulard. I mean, everybody connects Soulard to the market, and, but it's actually a great place to see some of the earliest examples of architecture in St. Louis that we still have left behind from those early people that came here. One of the great things about architecture in Soulard and seeing these homes is to think about what happened inside of them. I mean, these things, the buildings behind me predate the Civil War. So to think that, you know, all the changes our country went through, people were inside them talking about those changes, right? They were experiencing life and all the changes we've seen in the modern era all happened within these walls. 
So most of the people in Sular would have lived in multi-family homes, like the ones behind me. There would have been several families living in different apartments, they're called flats. Um, some of them would have been, a, um, you would access it from the front, and then the other apartments you would access actually through something called a mouse hole. And this is a mouse hole. And this would have given the inhabitants of the building access to the backyard and to the upper floor apartments. And so I love to encourage people to just walk the neighborhoods, even if it's not your neighborhood, you know, walk it, look at the buildings, and think about the people that came, the people that built them. You know, we have so many buildings built by hand. And look at the, the legacy left behind by those artisans. Don't forget to look up in your own city.